And there we go. Good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. This is the fourth video in my NGTF135 head gasket replacement series. Um, the project though, if you've seen the previous video, you'll know the project has changed. Um, it's not just about replacing the head gasket now, it's an entire engine out subframe and engine rebuild exercise. So it's a really big piece of work and it's time to crack on with it. You may remember from the end of the last video that I have the subframe and engine out of the car and they're now sat by my driveway ready to be stripped down. So that's the next job and I'm going to make a start on doing that this afternoon. Uh, just before I get started on that, just to show you, I have a full set of um, silicon hoses and a full set of clips for them as well. Uh, they're going to sit in the garage in the corner for a little while. It'll be quite a long time before I need these. Anyway, on to the engine work. And the first job is to remove the rigid cooling pipes. Now the thermostat and water pump come off. Water pump is looking fine, it's in good condition. Next, I remove the dipstick tube. Two nuts and bolts hold the starter motor in place. That's the starter motor off. Um, nothing wrong with that at all, just needs a bit of a clean up. And the electrical contacts on the back are known to cause starting problems. So um, they will get a good clean as well. But um, yep, that one will be going back on the car. Now to remove the alternator. Which is also fine and also will be going back onto the car. I need to put the subframe on stands so that I can take the wheels off. Next, I remove the brake calipers and discs. The last job of the day is removing the anti-roll bar.
Before I can take the engine and gearbox out of the subframe, I need to remove the hubs and drive shafts. This nut would only undo so far, so I put some more duck oil on it and worked it backwards and forwards in the hope that it would free up. Which it didn't, so out of the nut splitter. I didn't want to use heat on this because I didn't want to ruin the rubber boot on the ball joint. So now all the bolts are out and the hub's released, all that remains is to get the drive shaft out of the differential. Um, two pry bars should be all it takes. Let's, let's see if it's as easy as it looks. Oh yes. So you really would have thought that I'd have learnt my lesson first time. Um, look what is stopping the drive shaft from coming out. That's the same sensor that stopped the subframe coming out of the car during the previous video. Right. Okay, so that's the near side drive shaft removed. Same again on the off side, and then I should be able to lift the engine out of the subframe. Yay, there we go. And that is the off side drive shaft removed. The hoist is now taking the weight of the engine so I can remove the engine mounts. There are three in total, two on the engine itself and one on the gearbox. This bolt wouldn't come loose so I ended up cutting it off with an angle grinder. It's a nice easy part to replace anyway.
stating the absolute obvious that's the engine and gearbox away from the subframe. Oh, oh yes please. And there we go. 